So good afternoon. And isn't it a beautiful day? I want to start by thanking you for giving me this opportunity to say a few words. But before I begin, I want to take a minute to congratulate Tumble Subhaswamy on his soon-to-be seven-year run as Chancellor of UMass Amherst. You and the rest of the team have done a great work here. In a country that's filled with great public universities, UMass Amherst, by every measure, is one of the very best. And you also have one heck of a hockey team, and I hear the food here is pretty good, too. Now, to the task at hand. Congratulations to the class of 2019. Now, true confessions, I've been to three of my own graduations, high school, college, and graduate school. I have no idea who spoke at my high school graduation. German Chancellor Helmut Kohl spoke at my college graduation. I do not remember one word he said. And General Motors CEO Roger Smith spoke at my business school graduation, and I don't remember anything he said either. So, I recognize the extremely high bar I have to climb over today to say something that might mean something. So let me start with this. Your lives will be filled with choices and challenges. The choices you make will play a big role in the challenges you face and how you handle them. So rule number one goes back to something you probably heard a lot from your parents as you were growing up. Make good choices. Second, be a good listener. You learn a lot more when you listen, even if you always don't want to hear what's being said. And third, appreciate that life is a team sport and that purpose usually comes from shared commitments. Now, no one would have expected my grandmother and my grandfather to choose one another. They met in an airfield in France during World War I. She was with the Red Cross, and he was a National Guardsman. She was from Newburyport, Massachusetts, and a, and a graduate of Smith College, just down the street. He was from New York City, and he never went to college. But they made a connection, and after the war, they wrote to each other. Not emails, not texting, no phone calls, no Instagram, no picture sharing, they wrote letters. And after a while, he wrote to her and asked her if she would marry him. She wrote back and said no. <laughs> and he was crushed. It turns out her mom and dad weren't wild about their daughter marrying some stranger from New York City, probably a Yankees fan. It was easy who didn't have much of a life story or the resources to come visit and ask for her hand in person. And these were all good points in the early 1920s. But the more my grandmother thought about it, the more she thought he was the one for her, and she did something that was a bit shocking for the time. She ignored her parents, and she wrote back to my grandfather and asked him if his marriage proposal was still on the table. He said it was, and they got married, and they settled just outside New York City, where he was working in a shoe store and eventually became a salesman in a men's clothing store. They raised three children. My granddad became a floor manager and then the head of personnel at the same clothing store, and my grandmother spent countless hours volunteering for the Red Cross and substitute teaching. Life was good. Then, through a series of unfortunate events, my grandfather lost his sight in his mid-60s, and then he became pretty physically disabled. My grandmother couldn't take care of him by herself anymore, so they moved to Newburyport, where she had tons of family and a lot of support. And as kids, we spent hours and hours with them. And in fact, my grandfather, believe it or not, taught me how to love the Boston Red Sox.
He used to listen to every game on a battery-powered radio, and I'd sit with him, soaking in the sounds of the ballpark behind the chatter of the commentators. Now, listening to a baseball game on the radio with someone who's blind is completely different than listening to it with someone who can see. He never got distracted. He was totally focused on what he could hear, and the sounds coming out of that radio filled the small living room we sat in on game days to the brim. It was simply amazing. Now, my grandmother remains one of the smartest people I've ever met. When I was in high school, I asked one of my history teachers if she could come serve as a guest lecturer. Now, she started her remarks by saying, my grandfather was born before George Washington died. And then she was off. A personalized interactive discussion of US history woven together with direct connections between historic events and family folklore, which my cast classmates thought was great. Now, my grandfather died in 1971, one year before their 50th wedding anniversary. And my grandmother died in 1982 at the age of 96. I tell you their story because they made an unusual choice. They chose each other. They were an odd couple for their time. They never had much money, but they built a purposeful and beautiful life. They had big challenges, but they played the hand they were dealt with kindness and optimism together. This is important. Every hand comes with surprises and disappointments. Yours will too. Who will play that hand with you? It's one of the biggest and most important choices you'll make. Secondly, be a good listener. When I ran for governor the first time in 2010 and lost to former Governor Deval Patrick, well, that kind of, well, hurt. In fact, I'm still, I'm still pretty sore about it when a young man called me up and said he was organizing a first robotics competition at the Aganis Arena at Boston University. He wanted me to come speak to the teams who were participating in the contest to kick off the morning. I reminded him I just lost the election and questioned him about why me. He paused for a minute and then he said, I think you're perfect. I want you to talk about why it's okay to fail. Now my, <laughs> now my first thought was, wow, it's a good thing you're not standing next to me. My second was to hang up on him. But I'd been raised by my parents to hear people out, and I did. In time, I thought the story he was asking me to share was worth telling, so I went and I told it, and I was glad that I did. Now, my parents were married for 63 years before my mom died after a 12-year battle against Alzheimer's. My mom, God rest her soul, was a Democrat, and my dad, who's now 90, is a Republican. As far as I can tell, they canceled each other out in almost every election, maybe even including mine. <laughs> Growing up, the dinner table in our house was a constant conversation. Nobody's motives or character were questioned. Nobody threw anything, but people had plenty of opinions. There was only one rule. You had to listen more than you spoke. As my father used to say, I'm more interested in your receiver than your transmitter. And when you spoke, you had to demonstrate some appreciation for what the other person was saying. In their house, being part of the team meant appreciating more points of view than just your own and demonstrating it respect respectfully on a regular basis. They were great partners to each other and to those around them, and they understood and appreciated the people who made their life special. Family, friends, colleagues, classmates, neighbors. People talk a lot about happiness these days. I think happiness is fleeting, and chasing it misses the bigger picture. What matters and what sustains happiness is purpose. And purpose comes from being in it, whatever it might be, with people you care about and who care about you. Marriage, friendship, work, community service, play, child raising, coaching, teaching, cheering, volunteering. Notice I didn't mention politics. 
Now, I find tremendous purpose in public service, but it pales compared to 31 years of marriage, three children, and the neighbors and friends who fucked us up for years before I did anything in government and will be there to do the same long after my time in public life is over. I'm 62 years old. That's 744 months and 22,630 days and a lot of miles. I've had good days and bad ones, good months and bad ones, good years and bad ones. That's not what I remember most. What I remember and what I cherish most of all are the people I've had a chance to share my time with, the relationships I've been able to develop, and how those people have made me feel. I've tried desperately hard not to let them down, to be there for them, and to set a good example. Now, my dad always felt he won the lottery when he met and married my mom. And while he hated Alzheimer's, he found joy in caring for her when she got sick because it gave him purpose. Make good choices, be a good listener, and appreciate that life is a team sport. Cliches? Yeah. But that doesn't make them wrong, it just makes them old, like me. Let me close with this. My daughter, our youngest child, graduates from college next week, and I wrote her a letter. Here's part of it. Every life is about choices and challenges. You choose your friends, you choose your path, you choose your attitude. Over and over and over again, you will choose. The challenges, whatever they may be, will be there no matter what choices you make. But the choices you make can determine the kinds of challenges you'll face and the arsenal of support and guidance that will be there to see you through them. Do not fear challenges and disappointments. Growth is often about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and learning from difficult moments. And my life has been a journey filled with many disappointments. But I learned from those experiences, and I had your mom and my network of friends and colleagues to help me see through it. To all of you, I would just say, I wish you well. Believe it or not, your graduation, even though it's called commencement, is really the end of the beginning. The next chapter belongs to you. Make good choices. Listen, the world is calling, and find great partners and make your world a better place. God bless, go Minutemen, and good luck. <laughs>